So long as humanity exists, difference will be there. So people are different. People are different and diverse in their temperament, in their dispositions, in their interests, in their potential, in their capabilities, their physical capabilities, mental, emotional, even spiritual. People have even spiritual, different spiritual capacity. And understanding this and acknowledging this is very, very important. And again, this is the will of God. This is a natural law that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that God willed and God wanted. This is the sunnah of God. It's a law that will not change. In fact, a certain reading of the following verse of this verse suggests that also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God is celebrating that difference when he says, And for this, he created them. Obviously, with difference comes disagreement. That's a very natural outcome. So God is telling us now that I have made you different inevitably, meaning you will inevitably disagree. Disagreement will be something that we cannot avoid, that can never be avoided. Now, is it the case that the Quran is telling us that we will be different and we will be disagreeing and it left us to manage it, left it to us? Or did the Quran really suggest a way to manage that disagreement? A disagreement, remember that it could happen between any two people. Two people who even follow the same path, who even follow the same line, follow the same school of thought, follow the same way of thinking. Two sisters, two brothers growing up in the same family, the same house. They could differ. Difference could be between any two groups of people, any two individuals. Two Muslims together. Two people of the Abrahamic faith together. Muslim and a Christian and a Jew. People from the Abrahamic religions with people from non-Abrahamic religions. Right? We have billions of Buddhists, of Hindus, of Zoroastrians. People of subscribing to a religion with people who do not subscribe to any religion. There could be also disagreement. Disagreement can happen between two people who share absolutely nothing except for humanity, which itself is a big deal of a common factor to build upon in any dialogue. So dialogue is a way to manage that disagreement. Now let's see, let's consult with the Quran and see what the Quran suggests about dialogue and what manners of dialogue the Quran recommends us to observe. First and foremost is basically acknowledging the other, is to acknowledge, is to acknowledge the difference, is to acknowledge again that this is the will of God, is to acknowledge that this was made and created for good. God says in the Quran, chapter 49, verse 13, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem, Ya ayyuhal nasu, inna khalaqnakum min dhakarin wa untha, wa jahalnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita'arafu. Lita'arafu. O you mankind, surely we created you of, of male and female, and we have made you races and tribes, so that you may get mutually acquainted so that you may learn about each other, so, ma- so that you may learn through each other. The verse continues, In God's eyes, the most honored of you are the ones most mindful and conscious of God. This is the benchmark that the Quran is setting for honor. So acknowledging the difference. The second very important point that the Quran is recommending when engaging in dialogue is that no one should enter dialogue and assume that they know the whole truth absolutely. They own the absolute truth. And therefore, one shall always account for the possibility that the other has a share of the truth. The possibility that the other has something that I can learn from, no matter how small, and it is not small, it is never small. If I have a share of the truth and the other has a little share of the truth, then if I am a truthful person searching for the truth and the wisdom, I should look for it wherever it may be. Al-hikmatu dhalatul mu'min. 
right? So wisdom, if we accept it as a loose translation of hikmah, is the lost property of the believer. The believer should, should always go out and seek it and get it wherever it may be. In fact, the Quran criticizes those who exclude and excommunicate the others and accusing them of having nothing, having no basis, having no grounds whatsoever. The Quran, chapter 2, verse 113 says, وَقَالَتُ الْيَهُودُ لَيْسَتِ النَّصَارَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَقَالَتِ النَّصَارَ لَيْسَتِ الْيَهُودُ عَلَى شَيْءٍ وَهُمْ يَتْلُونَ الْكِتَابِ So the verse talking about the Christians, the Jewish communities at the time, that the Jews said that the Christians have no grounds whatsoever to stand on. And the Christians say the Jews have no grounds whatsoever to stand on, though they both read the scripture. The Quran really describes it in a really interesting way. It says, كَذَلِكَ قَالَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ مِثْلَ قَوْلِهِمْ Those who have no knowledge say the same. Exclusionism, rejection, is, which is the result of believing that you own the truth and the other has nothing of that truth. This is the result of this attitude, exclusionism. And the Quran describes those who have a similar rhetoric as those who have no knowledge. The ignorant. This is the rhetoric of the ignorant. In fact, even the Quran commands the Prophet to ask the Lord for to be increased in knowledge. وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا وَقُلْ رَبِّ زِدْنِي عِلْمًا Even the Prophet, the esteemed Prophet himself, is commanded to ask to be increased in knowledge or even he does not own the whole knowledge. صلى الله عليه وآله. In another, on another occasion in the Quran, the Quran commands the Prophet in chapter 34, verse, verse 24. And this comes in the context of conversation with mushrikun, with people who are associated partners with God, which is a very sensitive, fundamental element of faith. The Quran commands the Prophet to say what? قُلْ قُلِ اللَّهِ وَإِنَّ أَوْ إِيَّاكُمْ لَعَلَى هُدًا أَوْ فِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ Say, and we or you are either on the right path or in open error. So in the context of conversing with the other and dialoguing with the other, the Prophet is commanded to join the dialogue on equal grounds. The third point, and this is a very fundamental and one of the most important principles that the Qur'an invites to in dialogue, and that is using appropriate technique and appropriate style when talking to the other. Qur'an chapter 16, verse 125 says, أُدْعُوا إِلَىٰ سَبِيلِ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْمَوْعِظَةِ الْحَسَنَةِ وَجَادِلْهُمْ بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنَ So God commands the Prophet, invite people to the way of your Lord with wisdom and good counsel, or beautiful preaching and exhortation, and argue with them, present your arguments with them in the best of manners, in the best of manners. Now notice here when God talks about wisdom, loosely translated as al-hikmah, he does not qualify it in any way. He does not say good wisdom or bad wisdom. Wisdom is wisdom. Invite to the path of your Lord with wisdom. But when he talks about counsel, preaching, exhortation, he says good exhortation. Al hasana, Because there could be bad exhortation. There could be mawaidha sayyia. But the Quran wants us to use the good manner. In fact, even when God commands Moses and Aaron to go to Pharaoh, Prophets Musa and Harun, peace be upon them, when to go to Pharaoh and invite him and remind him, and Pharaoh, after he reached that pinnacle of arrogance that he reached, God says, فَقُولَا لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيِّنًا Talk to Pharaoh softly, kindly, 
Maybe he remembers. Maybe he becomes God conscious. Speak softly. So in that verse, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when God talks about argumentation, presenting your arguments, also he qualifies it with billati hiya ahsan. In the best of ways, in the best of manners. Because again, there could be argumentation that is good. There could be argumentation that is bad. But there also could be argumentation that is best. And this is what the Quran wants us to do in dialogue. Present our arguments in the best of manners. In fact, the Quran also says, Repel evil by that deed which is better. Magnificent. Repel evil by that deed which is better, and thereupon the one whom between you and him is enmity will become as though he was a devoted friend. This is the promise of the Quran. The Quran is telling us, guaranteed, go that path of using the best of manners. I guarantee you that your enemy will turn your friend. But it's by no means an easy way. The Quran itself, it continues, it says, it is not an easy thing. People who are able to attain the status are only the patient. Are only those who are able to tolerate, who have a level of patience. And these indeed would have the greatest of fortunes. This is therefore the style that we should select in our dialogue with the other. So whenever you see on a TV channel, whenever you see on a social media account, a religious figure or a person of politics starting their rhetoric with words of accusation, with words of excommunication, takfir, insults, know outright that this person is working, is doing what is in opposition to the Qur'an. Number four of the manners of dialogue is enter the dialogue stating the common grounds between you and the other. This is very good. Don't start by mentioning what makes you different from the other, which is, of course, nothing to be ashamed of, as mentioned. It is nothing to be ashamed of. But start with a positive atmosphere. Open the bridges for knowledge exchange with the other. In fact, the Prophet also on an occasion was commanded to say, so chapter, Quran chapter 3 verse 64 says, قُلْ يَا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ تَعَالَوْا إِلَىٰ كَلِمَةٍ سَوَاءٍ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَكُمْ أَلَّا نَعْبُدَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَلَا نُشْرِكَ بِهِ شَيْئًا so here also, the verse says, Say, O people of the book, come to a word common between us and you, that we worship none but God, that we associate nothing with him, and that some of us do not take others as laws instead of God. The prophet here was commanded to build on common grounds with the other. Now, the other in this situation happened to be the Jewish and the Christian communities at the time. What was the common factor? What was the common grounds with them? Belief in one God, worshipping one God. State it, build on it, and move forward. So differences can be in fundamental sensitive elements of belief, let alone elements of normative practices. Okay, but what if the other does not wish to dialogue? Okay, what if the dialogue does not lead anywhere? Then the Quran says, it, the verse continues saying, فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَقُولُوا شَهَدُوا بِأَنَّا مُسْلِمُونَ And shall they turn their back? Say, bear witness that we have surrendered to God. This is our position and we leave it to God. My dear sisters and brothers and listeners, let us always walk by the Quran in our lives, in our conduct, in the way we encounter people, in the way we talk to the other, in the way we engage with the other. Let us always remember to acknowledge that difference is a phenomenon that was willed by God, that difference is good, that should be built upon. Let us always acknowledge, second, that the other always has something that we can learn from. Always has something that we can learn from. That cumulative community experience, even individual experiences, there's always something that we can learn from and that we do not own the whole truth. 
Third, let us always remember to join the dialogue on equal grounds without any exclusion. Fourth, let us always use appropriate methods. Let's, let's always use hikmah, wisdom, mawa'idha hasana, good exhortation, and jadilhum billati hiya ahsan, best argumentation. And fifth, let us always remember to state our beliefs and start and build from the common grounds. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك على محمد وآله الطاهرين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله in the name of God the most merciful my dear sisters and brothers I find it very important to spend a few minutes to reflect on a phenomenon an unfortunate phenomenon really that we've been observing for the past years especially with the boom in the media and the social media and that is the rhetoric of scholars, uh, Muslim scholars even, and in the way that they kind of discuss matters uh, with their other uh, Muslim brothers, especially those of us who subscribe to the path of the Prophet and subscribe to the path of the family of the Prophet wasallam. I thought to share with you and remind myself and remind yourselves of a few reports, of a few traditions that we have from uh, some of our imams, on how our imams wanted us to engage with the other who is different from us. I selected two reports from Usul al-Kafi, one that an Imam al-Sadiq, our sixth imam, Jafar, son of Muhammad, he said, addressing one of his companions, Ya Abd al-Aziz, inna al-imana ashru darajat bi manzilati sulam yus'adu minhu mirqatun ba'da mirqat. Oh, Abd al-Aziz, faith, is 10 levels like a ladder that is ascended step by step, level by level. فَلَا يَقُولَنَّ صَاحِبُ الْإِثْنَيْنِ لِصَاحِبِ الْوَاحِدِ لَسْتَ عَلَى شَيْءٍ Whosoever is at the second level shall not say to the one at the first level that you have no grounds whatsoever. That what you're saying is baseless, that what you're saying is senseless, that you don't make any sense, that this is nonsense. One shall not do that because God gave you a share. When God gave you the potential, the capacity to have two shares of faith and two shares of knowledge, then who gives you the right to excommunicate someone whom God gave one share of knowledge and one share of faith? The Imam continues, he says, and whosoever is at the third level shall not say to the one at the second level that you have no grounds whatsoever to stand on. And the Imam keeps saying it until he reaches the 10th level. He continues saying, So do not disqualify the one beneath you, lest you'd be disqualified by the one above you. Golden rule, yes? If you accept that you disqualify the one beneath you, assuming your judgment is right, that he or she is indeed beneath you in knowledge or faith. And this is a big assumption. If you accept that you disqualify who is beneath you, you should accept that the one above you would disqualify you. Okay, so what do we do then, O oh, our dear leader, our dear Imam? He says, If you see one who is beneath you, one level, pull them towards you gently. If you see that my level is beneath your level, take my hand, pull my hand towards you, pull it gently. Pull it gently. And do not burden them with what they cannot tolerate. You have spiritual potential that someone else might not have. You have intellectual potential and capabilities that someone else might not have. We are different. Do not burden people with something that is not that fundamental. If you hold it, if you bear it, that's beautiful. 
well done, but do not force it on others. Is this what we do, my dear sisters and brothers? فَإِنَّ مَنْ كَسَرَ مُؤْمِنًا فَعَلَيْهِ جَبْرُهُ Are we taking the hand of the ones whom we think is beneath us, gently? Or is some of us preparing a, already a list of accusations and insults and words of excommunications? فَإِنَّ مَنْ كَسَرَ مُؤْمِنًا فَعَلَيْهِ جَبْرُهُ Whoever breaks a believer, it is upon them to heal them. And on the Day of Judgment, you will be asked, why you did not heal that believer. Another narration which I find really enlightening and really interesting is that someone was at the presence of Imam al-Sadiq, the same Imam Ja'far, son of Muhammad salam, and the narration says, ثُمَّ جَرَى ذِكْرُ قَوْمٍ There was a group of people that were mentioned in front of the Imam and that person told the Imam, may I be sacrificed for you? We repudiate them, we reject them because they say what we do not say. The Imam exclaimed, he said, They love us, they follow us, they respect us, but they don't say what you say and therefore you reject them. The man said yes. The Imam responded, we have what you do not have. Have you seen us rejecting you? Is it suitable for us to reject you? He said, no. The Imam continues, and God has what we do not have. God has the knowledge that we do not have. Have you seen God forsaken us? Have you seen God rejected us? The man said, no, but what do we do, O oh, our Imam? Imam responded, Take them as friends, have good relations with them. Take them as your brothers and sisters and companions on the path. Do not dissociate from them. Some of the believers have one share of faith. Some have two shares of faith. Some have three, some have four, five, six, seven. People have different potentials of how much faith they could have. It is not appropriate for someone who was given one share of faith or knowledge to bear what was given to the one who had two or three or four shares of knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask God, my dear sisters and brothers, that he would guide us and allow us and help us to walk the Qur'an, to walk the way our imams, the way the Prophet and the family of the Prophet wanted us to walk, to follow their manners in dialogue, to follow their manners that they wanted us to deal with, with the other. سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين صلوات